Um, okay, so this is another video ready for the paper three exam on Friday. Uh, so this time we're going to look at the QADT um, based on what's found in the past papers for uh, A-level computer science. <clears throat> so um, a Q is made up of um, so data, like a sequence of data. So if you think of like an array. Um, I'm not very good with paint anymore, like an array, uh, but instead of well being able to write to any, any element, so the interface of a queue is only data can be added to the end and um, data can be removed from the front, basically. So a queue has uh, two pointers, a front pointer and an end pointer. Um, and because the there's no need to store any sort of like additional data within each item, um, such as the linking between different nodes. The order is always linear. So one node is um, linked to the next node. There's no need to represent a, a node using a class. So we can just implement a queue or a circular queue where the last element links back to the start is more sensible. We can just implement this using an array of strings or an array of non-composite types. So the two pointers we need to store, and again, we're going to do a procedural implementation with two uh, globals. The first one will be the uh, start pointer. So let's call that SP. And the other one is going to be the end pointer. So in the default state of the queue, um, both the start pointer and the end pointer just point to the, the, the first node. And because the node that is em is empty, then this represents that the queue is empty. So if the start pointer and the end pointer are equal and the node or the item they point to is blank, then this means that the queue is empty. So let's add an item in. Uh, the first item I'm going to add is the letter X. And what happens is, oh, first of all, I need to look for where the end pointer is. And the end pointer points to this. So then I need to update my data and then move my end pointer on. Different implementations, I guess you could um, move the end pointer at the, the next, um, the, sorry, either do it at the next time something is added, or you could um, do it at the end of that operation. Let's add something else. So this time, let's add the letter P. Wow, this is really not going that well. <laughs> let's try again. Add the letter P. And again, let's update the end pointer. Something like that. Um, so now if we ran a DQ operation, what would happen? So we would look for what node or what item the start pointer is pointing at, and then that would need to be removed. And then as a result, the start pointer would also increment. So let's add a few more items. So add the value Q, and what we do is um, update the end pointer. Now let's add the value uh, R and let's update the end pointer. So now because it's a circular queue, what we would do is loop back around to the start. And this allows us to use the, the node or the position that was emptied previous. So let's add one more in, let's add O. And now we've got a different condition to what we started with. Similar in some ways, so similar in that the start pointer is now equal to the end pointer, but the fact that this combined with the that the node that they both point at is now occupied, this state now represents that the queue is full. Um, so that's a basic implementation of um, yeah a circular queue. So like I said, uh, let's program this, and we're going to do it procedurally. So let's in the main program. Set out the date we need. Uh, 
So Q is going to be an array of items and start pointer is going to be a pointer and end pointer is going to be a pointer. So dissimilar from the binary tree, we don't actually want to initialize these to null because the default state is we're waiting for something to be added, added. So actually the start and the end is just the first index in the Q array. Um, so once we've done that, let's do create Q and def create Q. Ah, there's not really much we need to do in this. So maybe let's just put that in the main program as well. So what is the queue? Well, the queue is a list of items uh, dependent on how the, whatever the size is. So again, let's use a size constant and keep it to 10. And the kind of operations we want to be able to do is to both end queue to add something to the end of the queue uh, and uh, also DQ to remove something from the front of the queue. So let's add some messages to help this. So if it's successful, and we want to say something like uh, new data was added to the queue. In this case, if this was successful, we want to add something, uh, we want to put something like remove was uh, or left the queue. Let's deal with the NQ operation first of all. So we first of all need to check that we're not trying to NQ when this state is the current state. So this state is represented by the start pointer and the end pointer are equal and the Q at either of those, the, the what we have there is not empty. So it's not a null value. And what this means is that the Q is full. And we can't do the end queue. So only if that condition is false, then we can go on to actually adding the, adding the data to the queue. Um, so what we would do is we take the end pointer. The end pointer is actually pointing to, in a normal circumstance, the next current node, right? Or the next, sorry, the next available space. So let's write that in. And then what we need to do is just update the end pointer. So dissimilar from the binary tree, we don't need to link using linked pointers. It's always incremental. The one thing that we just need to check is that we haven't got past the end. So remember, size is going to be 10, but the last index is, um, well, in a 10, uh, an array with 10 items example, then the last index would be nine, right? So what we need to do is if we get to 10, that then suggests that the end pointer actually needs to go back to zero. Um, okay, so let's see if that works. Let's try and NQ something. So NQ, let's do colors this time, yellow. And we need to define our global variables, global end pointer. So we've got yellow in the queue. Now, if we just inspect queue, we can see we've got, um, nine array elements with a value of none and one with a value of yellow. So let's now try program the DQ operation. Like I said before, we can't DQ when the queue is empty. And if you think what represents the queue being empty, it's the same sort of thing. We've got the start pointer and end pointer pointing to the same position. However, the node they're pointing at is none. What this represents is the queue is empty. So as long as that condition is not true, then we can remove something from the queue. So let's create this variable removed and uh, we'll take the start pointer and whatever the item is at the start pointer, we're going to copy into this variable. And then what we're going to do is delete that value from the queue, overwrite it with a null value. And then actually it's just very similar. This time we want to update the start pointer. So we're going to increment the start pointer by one because it's a circular queue, we need to check if we've got to the end of the array, and if we have, we loop back, loop back around to the start. And that's it. It's very simple. Um, so let's do some colors this time. So colors equal yellow, blue, red, magenta, green, cyan, violet, aquamarine, pink, brown, gray, black, Okay, just a list of test data and for 
hole in colors. Let's enqueue the colors. So we should uh, see some of the colors be able to be added, and then we get this error message saying that the queue is full. Um, now let's try and remove everything for iron range 10 BQ hole. Um, whoops, no argument. So we're just going to try and DQ from the queue 10 times. Uh, here we need to set our globals again. So the thing that we're changing inside the scope of DQ is the queue. I mentioned in the last video, we don't actually need to glo globalize or declare as global if something is mutable. A list in Python is mutable, but let's do it anyway, just to be safe. Um, one thing I missed in the last video is you should really be uh, giving your type hints. So the new data is a string coming in. And let's put some comments here. So it's an array one of zero to nine of string. And it's an integer. Oh, it's kind of a pointer if you're going on the paper three syllabus, isn't it? Let's just say integer stroke pointer. Remember to add your type comments when doing exam answers. Um, so let's try to run this again and everything leaves. Let's just now just do a mixture of enqueuing and dequeuing, just make sure it works in all circumstances. Let's add yellow, let's dequeue twice. Let's add red, let's add blue, let's dequeue once. And let's see, everything works as expected. So everything left the queue. Um, yellow got added, yellow left. There's nothing left to dequeue. It's empty, red got added. Blue got, blue got added, um, red left, because red was first in the queue. So that's the basic kind of implementation of the Cambridge International queue abstract data type.